hello, I am doing my existential crisis of how to combine personal knowledge management and study system. In this video, we're gonna go into the YPCAM for school and two special workflows for learning new content and writing essays. Do you recognize that I just do this peace sign by default when I am awkward? Hello, welcome back. I am Priscilla. I am a dental and psychology student. The story begins like this. During my January review, I was scrolling through my old YouTube videos. This video is how to choose the best note-taking app. And one of the criteria that I saw in my video for picking a note-taking app is what is your purpose? Purpose in life for note-taking, for studying, for learning? If I ask my question to past self in the video, she will be like, uh, I don't know. And if I ask the current self, she will say, My purpose of personal knowledge management and building a second brain is to help other people achieve what they want in life so we all can live happily ever after. So what is a second brain? Brain this term was coined by a productivity expert named Tiago Forte. What is a second brain? A second brain is an external storage of information and resources that you need to complete for your work or to reference them for future use. He created a course called Building a Second Brain that is targeted towards researchers, content creators, or entrepreneurs' work style, but not students. From university degrees to books, podcasts, YouTube videos, I consume and learn many things. I forget a lot of them and I blame myself. Something is wrong. Fundamentally, the outcome of personal knowledge management and the conventional school system collides. In school, we have a system and course syllabus to follow. In contrast, in personal knowledge management, I have the ability to be free and to build a curriculum, order control, and learn things in a way that my brain desires to. I think the core problem is that having the distinct separation of personal knowledge management for creative endeavors and school is just not a good separation. The world is very interconnected. Those two things should work together. So, after defining what a second brain is, why should you learn this convoluted skill? Here are some reasons that I, as a student, has benefited from building a second brain and how you can too. Personal knowledge management feels like play, and I just watch Andrew Huberman's podcast on the power of play. Play in this context does not mean tinkering with toys and stuff. It means that we develop a mindset of exploring things without caring about the outcome. The benefit of play is that we can tap into our neuroplasticity. It will improve your problem solving and critical thinking skills. I will be able to externalize my connections and visualize my thinking on my maps and notes to free up my attention to critical think and problem solve. Jotting down the possible topic ideas of an essay allow me to compare and contrast which idea is worth my time to execute. And with learning, having all the information and relationships laid out, we can compare and contrast different relationships and see which one is important. This helps me identify a threshold concept. And this is leads us to our next point, threshold concepts. Threshold concepts feel like a key to a new domain of knowledge. Once you understand this concept, it will unlock a whole new world. For example, in biology, some threshold concepts might be cellular restoration and functions of organelles inside a cell. The next point is that PKM helps us to cultivate creativity. Creativity is arguably the skill that is the most valuable one in the 21st century. This is the one that artificial intelligence might not be able to replicate at the moment because creativity re requires mixing, connecting things, emotions to make this thing come true. Just like Steve Jobs says, creativity is just connecting things. And then the next one is preparing for my lazy self. Preparing for my lazy self means that whenever I start work, it, I procrastinate like an hour or 30 minutes before I start. So by having all my notes, information, and resources outlined ready before I start will decrease my possibilities in procrastinating. And after considering all the benefits of building a second brain, I'm sure that you are keen to start building yours too. But remember to keep one little thing in your brain. You got your little brain there, Priscilla. I am not what I do. My self-worth, grades, and performances are not attached to my identity. And and this mindset will help me detach me from the failures that I make during the journey. Lo and behold, on this journey, we will make many mistakes. As the system fails, sometimes the system will get better. Lo and behold, there are so many apps every single day bombing at us with advertisements, sponsorships, and app reviews. Let me be honest with you guys. I have this weird tendency that I've just realized. Whenever I see this new trend, before I buy or subscribe to an app, 
can imagine all the possible solutions that I want to use this but when I actually buy the app all of those magic just suddenly disappears. I think it is the power of advertising that it creates an illusion that I need this thing. It taps into my unconscious mind and say to me oh you need that app keep this in mind and be intentional and mindful about every single purchase. So here I have came up with a few questions. The first one is do I have similar tools? Does this tool suit my needs and criteria that I then if I answer yes for the both questions above the third step is that I will do a thought experiment with this app. I will imagine that I bought this app and I can see how it might improve my current unsatisfactions and problems that I have with this system. And if it's not as valuable after the fourth question will be how can I customize, enhance, and update my current strategies of the apps that I have. And if the thought experiment says that a new app that I want to add to my system will improve my workflow, I will ask myself do you want to invest the time or like a month to get used to this app? This four questions are very lengthy but it ensures that I won't do stupid things. And before we go into the forest of PKM that you need to pick your things, I'll go over the categories of this PKM Wonderland Enchanted Forest. So I'm going to categorize the app space on primary function and disclaimer for the sake of simplification. Many of those apps serve more than one function, so for typing notes, we're using a note-taking app. Those include RemNote, Notion, Obsidian, <laughs> Roam Research, Evernote. The next category is task management apps, like things and to-do lists. And then the next one is flashcard apps. This includes Anki and Quizlet, Read It Later, and Highlight apps. This includes Instapaper, Pocket, Read from Readwise. Highlight integration tools. This tool allows you to import highlights from books, podcasts, and Read It Later apps with the highlights, and then it export it to your note-taking app so you can do your knowledge management later. And there's only one app in here, it is Readwise. Our main objectives as student is to learn, complete assignments, write, and do projects. It's when we're learning a concept for the first time and encoding, forming relationships and encoding into our brain, we will need to use handwriting. Of course, we don't want to type our notes. There's a paper that, that says, pen is all mightier than the keyboards. Of course, good old pen and paper work, but if you're like a digitalized person, you can use an iPad. And some of the apps that I love to use for my math are concepts, good notes, or notability. And for writing essays and word processing, it is a good old Microsoft Word. So with all those tools, please do not fall into the weeds. Don't worry, I'm going to bring you through the four basic steps on using those apps. So those four steps will be the backbone or of our hands to know how to implement the apps into our building up from the scratch workflow. So here we're not just going to talk about writing, we're going to talk about again, learning things for the first time. The first step is capture to get the information that you need for studying this chapter. For example, it can be a textbook, a Google, it can be lecture slides from your professor, a YouTube video. The second step is curate. We want to consider if this information is beneficial to our studies. This means that we are controlling the order of how we take in our information. Sometimes the information that are presented in school is what the professor thinks that is suitable for us, but everybody has different backgrounds and understanding and knowledges, and our brain knows what is essentially the best for us. So the first two steps, capture and curate, works hand in hand. The third step is conceptualization. We want to internalize the text, understand it, and memories. We want to make relationships with our current and past knowledges. And of course, controlling the order of how you take in your information also applies here. The process can be very very messy, but you will see what is happening inside your brain when you are able to group information and form relationships as you conceptualize. The fourth step is to create or to study for a test. This step will depend on what the course syllabus says. In this course might have no exams and we have a bunch of writings and products to do. Then we'll create original work for our assignments and reference our sources. And then if not, we will have another version to study for a test. But fundamental principles that we are learning those knowledge and the this last step of crystallizing the intelligence from the previous three steps. So here I have selected two workflows that I really like to use for writing essays and learning content in school. There will be five app functional categorization in each of those workflows. And then for learning new content, the first app would be 
a task management and scheduling app. The second one would be a note-taking app. The third one would be a would be a mind mapping app, and then the fourth one would be a flashcard app. Is preparing a test. So where we use apps from mind mapping and flashcard here. So let's see how we can put all those apps and strategies together. Just like there is no perfect app, there's also no perfect workflow. I have to be willing to switch up my workflow depending on the task or content that I'm studying. So as a student who studies dentistry and psychology, or I like some of you out there who studies content heavy science courses, so with the capture step for learning heavy content, we'll go through syllabus and enter the due dates and tasks for the course. And then next we will download all the lecture slides and have them all in one folder so we can access them easily. This is preparing for our lazy self and then you feel extra like I am. I'll find a few YouTube channels or Khan Academy courses to facilitate my understanding. So to create knowledge when I study a new subject or chapter during the semester, I will scope the subject and generate curiosity by asking how and why is this important questions. And then I'll collect the keywords and then allow myself to learn and order my brain desires where I can control how the information comes in. So I will not read the textbooks linearly, I will skip around and learn in order that my brain desires. And then the next step is to conceptualizing. Remember that knowledge does not mean anything when they are not compared, we are using mind maps. From the questions and keywords I've collected in the curate step, here I will make a mind map and form groups of information and make connection between those groups and evaluate which relationship is more important. And then through this mind map, it will show a flow of information. And of course, in this mind map, there will be branches from each group of information. There cannot be more than four branches from one group because that is beyond humans' working memory capacity. And then the next step is study for the test. Of course, there will be meaningless details that we have to know for a test, such as how many carbons that, that are in a particular reaction in biochemistry sometimes that I just can't memorize, I will enter those information into RemNote or Anki to utilize the space repetition and active recall in those apps. And then to review the connections from the mind maps, I can do a mind map dump or teach an imaginary student. So this is the workflow for learning new content. This segues to our next workflow of writing how would capture, curate, conceptualize, and create differ here. So for students that need to write in a writing workflow, the first one would be a task management app. app. The second one is a highlight and reading app. The third one is highlight integration, fourth one, a note-taking app, and then the fifth one is a word processing app. As a science student, I also have all of GEs to take in English writing this. If I'm writing a scientific paper, I will use ResearchRabbit and Google Scholars to find potential scientific papers. Writing a literature or text analysis, I will research on the author's um, background of growing up and the historical context of the literature piece that I am re reviewing. And when I am looking at those things, I will slowly formulate a rough idea of what is the central core argument for this piece. And then next, I will import the resources and articles and that I will need for this rough idea into read. So this goes to our next step, curate, where we will highlight information from those sources. When I curate things, I will ask myself, does this highlight help me support my central core idea? And ideas and structure of the writing will be a little bit messy here, but no worries. Through the annotation, I have a right interpretation of what this highlight means to me in the essay and how it can support the central core idea. Like maybe it can be an individual paragraph or it can be a supporting point under something. And as I read, the highlights will be automatically imported into my note taking app with reading. Readwise. So connecting to the next step with Readwise, we will be at the conceptualization. So here with conceptualizing, we will form the topic sentences, solidify the central argument. I will flush out the outline and then insert the quotes and highlights that I have. So here I will have the topic sentence and maybe three or four quotes or evidence that I can use to support the topic sentence. And then all of those topic sentences will support the central core argument that I'm trying to deliver. And then the fourth step is to create, not study the test for this case. This is the final step of putting everything together for our understanding. And here 
it feels very effortless because it would just be stringing the evidences and putting transition words between the topic sentence and evidences and elaborating on what I found from the highlights. Because I have the annotations and the outline from the previous steps of conceptualization and curating. And then I'll edit and then turn this work in. And then the fun thing is that the resources from the previous paper can also be reused for other papers and other subjects. I greatly felt this when I had a paper discussing about a community problem about sleep deprivation. For the first writing course, I had to choose a community problem that I want to address and provide a solution to. So in this case, I chose social media anxiety and sleep deprivation. And those two things are really relatable. So I used the psychological theme and I learned from clinical psychology and then use it as a solution. I greatly hope that you will be able to implement this system and have more and do things and hobbies you like. So if you like this video, you might want to check out the four principles that I use to write evergreen notes, which is another super level of the current basic skills for those nerds out there who want to take more notes and learn more things maybe and bye bye i'll see you guys next time